that one uh, from recent weeks that you'd share with us this afternoon. Abigail. It is our reasonable or spiritual service, isn't it? That we present our all to the Lord. God considers that very reasonable. He gave his all for us, didn't he? Yeah. He sent his, uh, he spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. And he expects us to give our all back to him, doesn't he? Yes, it is our reasonable service. Uh, who else? Thank you. We're to make the praises of God glorious, aren't we? Hallelujah. Uh, we were created by him and we were created for him. Uh, it should not be considered uh, likely that praising God in, in heaven will be a strain, will be considered um, uh, <clears throat> uh, compulsory. It'll be pretty spontaneous, won't it? Yes, it will. Yep. I think those um, angels that are around about, those, those beings that are around about the throne crying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Uh, it's, it doesn't get old to them, does it? No. Hallelujah. And as we turn our, our hearts toward the Lord and consider his greatness, his goodness toward us, yeah, we'll lift our voice and give him the glory that's due his name, make his praise glorious. Who else has one? I saw another hand over here, didn't I? Marianne, sure. Luke chapter 9. Verse 23, 9.23. <clears throat> and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. That's Luke 9.23. Um, we were talking this morning on you know, what it means to be a Christian. Now one's saved. What does it mean to be a, a follower or a disciple of Jesus Christ? We need to deny ourselves and take up our cross daily and follow Jesus. Amen? Uh, I think that you all know that a, a one-time profession of faith in Jesus Christ, well, it may be a starting point. Amen? But faith is a living thing. We didn't uh, get over to James 2, but the Bible recognizes dead faith, doesn't it? Right? Yeah, there's dead faith. Dead faith is not a saving faith, is it? No. Nope. Living faith, active faith, is a faith that saves. So we, uh, we pursue actively, we follow hard after the Lord. And then... <clears throat> We'll give Titus 3, 5 a, a good familiar one. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Titus 3, 5. Good one to spend some time on meditating on it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we can go ahead and um, rearrange the furniture, guys, and uh, we'll take some time and we'll talk about the teachings. I was blessed to... Uh, as they're um, getting things set up here. The, um, the meetings there on Friday evening, talking about the, the teaching that we did there at the beginning of the year regarding the basic practices that are taught in the scripture that work to promote spiritual growth and life. Uh, we might refer to them as means of grace. Amen. God is a, uh, God being who he is could reveal himself any way that he chose to, couldn't he? He could personally visit your home on a daily basis uh, in very tangible, visible form and uh, allow you to converse with him, uh, give you formal instruction, uh, perform miracles before you. He could, he could choose to do that. Uh, he, could, he could do that if he chose to, couldn't he? Uh, he could have been doing that through the ages. He could do that uh, in, in uh, any number of different ways he could choose to reveal himself. But he, he has chosen as he has and shown us how he was chosen to reveal himself 
and we ought to avail ourselves of the means by which God reveals himself. You know, you've, uh, guys, you can come on up. Um, reading through your Bibles there, uh, uh, some of you would have, um, through the Bible, and we'll talk about that. It's been a blessing to, um, uh, to hear how many are, uh, are reading uh, through their Bible in uh, 2023, off to a good start. But you know, we refer to um, the, the witness that God has given to us in, in nature, as it's spoken of there in Romans 1, Psalm 19. Every, anybody see it there in Acts? Yeah. Where uh, as, as they were at, where? I think it might be ahead though. Of where, if oh, am I reading? Am I saying, is that? Ahead a day or two. It's 17. Today's 15. Oh, okay. Is, is, it, is it Lystra? It's Athens. Oh no no no! I'm referring to no. I'm, I'm refer, there's that Athens is 17, but but the um, Lystra, where he heals the impotent man in the 15, yeah. Um, uh, they're about to sacrifice to them, aren't they? Yeah. And he refers to the witnesses God has left through through rains and fruitful seasons, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. yep. And again, just a a, a a reference to God revealing Himself mm -hmm. through His goodness. To all souls. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, so there is that disclosure that is uh, self, God disclosing himself or revealing himself in nature. But for us, uh, as believers, we have access to his throne by the blood of Jesus. We can commune with God through time in his word. Amen? His word is alive and powerful. It's a spirit word. And he speaks to us in ways that are, you know, not audible, obviously. But he's sent his Holy Spirit. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. I will pray the Father. He will send another one like myself. He's been with you. He shall be in you. He shall lead you and guide you into all truth. Holy Spirit is a teacher. And you have never audibly heard the voice of God, probably. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Never seen his face. But he, if you're born again, God by his spirit lives inside of you, teaches you, and he teaches you from his word, doesn't he? And we've got, the, we've got access to the throne of God. We're invited to, and told, instructed to come boldly under the throne of grace. We can talk with God and he talks back to us and he's given us capacity to hear his voice spiritually. It's how he cho has chosen to reveal himself. Uh, can we expect to grow in our walk with the Lord if we neglect those simple practices? If God says, I'm going to speak to you from my word, you can talk with me uh, in prayer. You can come to me, come into my presence. Uh, let your request be made known. I'll give you my spirit. He'll speak to you, lead you, guide you. If we neglect communion with God, if we neglect the gathering that that. God has prescribed. Because, you know, uh, God's not, um, <clears throat> God knows our hearts better than we do. And in, uh, in John's epistle, he speaks to the, the self-deception that some walk in thinking that they could, what? Love God and not love their neighbor. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. yep. And God says, no, I'm not buying that. Uh, we can't love God. We can't love God whom we've not seen if we don't love our neighbor who we have seen, says the Lord. Amen? Yeah. In fellowship, we're looking out for the well-being of our brothers and sisters. We gather to edify one another, right? Mm -hmm. So you can't have a healthy relationship with the Lord neglecting healthy fellowship, can you? Can you expect to grow in your walk with the Lord if, if you reserve uh, your uh, time with the Lord for just you and him? No. He says we're to be a people that are looking out for the well-being of others. The Son of Man did not come to be ministered unto, but to ministered. Give his life. And he says, let this mind be in you, doesn't he? And those passages of Scripture, we see uh, the, the heart of the Lord, don't we? Yeah. yeah. He looks out for the interests of others, teaches us to follow his example. Fellowship. And of course, Preaching the gospel, again, it's, um, it's a means by which we fellowship with the Lord. He said, follow me and I will make you 
fishers of men. It's a fundamental aspect of discipleship. You're not going to have the kind of relationship with the Lord that you should have, could have, if you're, if you're not, if we are not actively sharing our faith with others. Jesus is real interested in seeing people come to know him as Savior and Lord, isn't he? He sure is. And if we uh, are, 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 are neglectful in that area of our, our walk with the Lord, then we are neglecting a means by which the Lord desires to reveal himself to us. And, and a revelation, of course, is an impartation of life, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So, a little bit of introduction, just a little bit of slash review of uh, some of the ground that we covered as we just took time again at the beginning of the year to talk about these uh, practices that are to be very much a part of our lives that we might grow in grace and in the knowledge of his will for our lives. Yep. Who wants to... Start just something that stood out to you from the teaching or some of the things that came up at your, your meetings there on Friday. Just continuing on that theme of the Word of God, we gave it some good discussion in our group. And yeah, several people, like you said, there's a lot of um, just enthusiasm, which is a blessing uh, mm -hmm. to do the read the Bible through in a year. <clears throat> and um, one comment that, was, uh, that came up was when you read the Word, and I forget exactly how it was put, but even if somebody didn't say it, this is still a good thought. When you read the Word, it's um, on your mind more. And I know, speaking personally, uh, my mind's always running, and it's always running the wrong direction. You know, um, It's always on something, or I regularly have to contend with thoughts that are uh, basically self-centered or not on the things that are true and honest and just, like mm. it says there in Philippians 4. And what a help that the Lord has given us in his word, when you take time and fill yourself up with the word of God, is take time to read the Bible on a regular basis, then it's in your thoughts more. And um, it, it's a very simple, very obvious principle, but it's an important one. And it was uh, good that it, it came up. You know, the passage in Timothy that uh, you had us turn to, he exhorts him to give attendance to reading mm -hmm. and exhortation and doctrine. Mm -hmm. And he goes on and talks about meditating on these things and giving yourself wholly to them. Mm -hmm. Take heed to yourself again and to the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, you'll save yourself and then that hear thee. And of course, uh, reading the Bible is a fundamental part of giving attention to the doctrine that we have because mm -hmm. by God's grace, uh, the only doctrine that we're holding to is the doctrine of the scriptures. And mm -hmm. um, so that's an important one. But yeah, just the... Uh, simple reality that uh, when you sow to the Spirit, you'll of the Spirit reap life. And if we take time to fill our minds and hearts with the Word of God, then uh, as we're going through the day, it's more likely that those uh, the Scriptures will be the things that fill our thoughts. And uh, it's just a very edifying practice. Mm -hmm. And it, of course, it, it takes a conscious and deliberate decision, doesn't it? Yes. Yes. Yep. We've all got the same number of hours, what was it, uh, 168 in a day? Or I mean a week, I mean? 168 a week in a day. Yeah, yeah wouldn't it be nice? Um, <clears throat> and um, yeah, we've all got the same number of hours in the week, don't we? Mm -hmm. And we are going to carve out time for, for um, what we consider to be important. Mm -hmm. we, all get, we all make time for what's important, don't we? Yeah. Yep, we sure do. Yeah. Um, we read through the Bible, you know, we, we said... If, has anybody found it to be uh, substantially more than 20 minutes? Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's okay. Probably, you know, I, I, that was just one day. I know that's when you're reading through the genealogies <laughs> and making a, a conscious effort to pronounce them, not just skip over them. Yep, so much for episode chapter two. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah, that could take a while. Okay. So, but, um, yeah, it's, it's going to be about that for an, at an average, uh, comfortable pace. And we ought to be able to carve out that kind of time on a daily basis. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And, of course, even if you're not doing the read the Bible through in a year sure. thing, just the principle of taking time in God's Word daily is... Uh, it's the main thing that you were speaking to the yeah, other day. and doing so in faith, believing that, that God does use it, whether it's to generally, in a very general way, nourish your soul yeah. as you feed upon the bread of life. Mm -hmm. Or 
the, the power that it has to renew the mind. I know I've been blessed just hearing a number of different ones say, wow, you know, I, I, I just uh, was reading this and, and hadn't seen that before. One in between services today was saying, yeah, I start reading and all, I get all these questions and they pop up and, and they hear different ones say, you know, oh yeah, we were talking about this thing and, and, uh, and yeah, had anybody seen that one? That particular truth before. And um, the Lord speaks to our hearts. He does. And we learn to think about him more rightly, don't we? We sure do through reading his word. We have... Uh, such a limited knowledge of what God is like and who he is. And he's our father and Jesus is our savior. And we're going to spend forever with him. And these, you know, you read your Bible and it's to get to know God better. It's to get to know God better because he desires that we would know him. He wants us to know him. He desires to impart life to us as we do so. Um, yeah, I've been reading through the Bible. Regina and I have been. It, it's um, been quite enjoyable. Um, I like the diversity of it, where you're reading two chapters in the old, two chapters in the new. And, um, you know, it just, um, and it's been forcing me to be able to um, push off some of the other things. We all have enough, we all have plenty of time in the course of the day. It's just what we spend our time on. Mm -hmm. And, um, but it's made me be able to push things off that I would normally uh, choose to do instead of being spend time with the Lord and um, especially on my lunch break at work you know got a computer sitting in front of me um, I can now start I'm starting to read also at lunchtime but where I get caught up is I go off on bunny trails because I'll read something and all of a sudden I want to find out where that town is or that city is or I want to find out uh, you know what the where the tribes of uh, you know Shem and Ham and and Jatham came from, and Noah's sons, you know, where they all went. And, Meshach you know, and Tubal. And yeah, exactly. You know, so <laughs> Magog. And, you know, it's just sort of, I, I get caught up in that kind of stuff. And with the internet, you definitely have access to a lot of information. Uh -oh. It definitely doesn't know it's all good. But um, everything on the internet is true. <laughs> <laughs> so, should we wait through that? No, but um, it's been very, uh, very enjoyable and, um, and edifying. And it also brings great peace. I know in the course of a day, it's, it's nice to be able to um, take the time and just stop, pray, be able to spend time with the Lord, um, and just get your mind refocused um, throughout the day. And um, it's also allowed, you know, for, you know, it really is the basis for good fellowship. And I know in our meeting, we talked a lot about, you know, just um, our, our fellowship is about gathering, but it's gathering to edify one another and build each other up. Mm -hmm. It's about giving. Uh, it's, it's never about getting. And we're always looking to um, um, build each other up. And I, I thought it's kind of neat because this reading around the word is really, yeah, like Jim was saying, it's really, um, you're more mindful of, of the word because you're spending more time in it. Um, but you're also having something to, if you're reading something at the same time as someone else is, mm -hmm. it gives you a good basis for fellowship, especially within your home, with your spouse, with uh, your children, if they're doing it alongside of you. Um, and also, you know, just brothers and sisters in the Lord, but mm -hmm. it really allows you, you know, to be able to, um, have some of those questions, start discussing it amongst each other mm -hmm. and, um, talking about those things. And maybe you picked up something they didn't, and maybe they picked up something you didn't read mm -hmm. in the reading. Um, so yeah, it's been quite edifying and quite enjoyable. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I guess we're still on that topic for a while. I know uh, since becoming a Christian, I was encouraged to read my Bible. And in Psalm 12 says that the words of the Lord are pure, as silver tried in a furnace of fire seven times. And when I was told that every word in the Bible is true, again, I, I love to read anyway, but just to come to the realization that everything that you read here is true, from genealogies to mm -hmm. blessings and curses to accounts of uh, prophecy, whatever it might be, when you read that and are told that and believe it, that verse where it says, behold wondrous things out of thy law, mm -hmm. yep. you Amen. just can't stop reading. I mean, it, it, is, it is more desirable than anything else because you know that this is, this is life to those who find health through all their flesh. And as you go through it, you can't help but find more verses that stand out to you. I know when mm -hmm. I first started reading, I would read a verse, and if it stood out, I'd stop, make a note, and go back to it the next day because the Lord is speaking through us, to mm -hmm. us through his word. And just to see it as not just you know, a, a 
a good psychological study or some best practices. No, this is true. Mm -hmm. Every word inspired by, by the Holy Spirit, by God. Mm -hmm. And someone mentioned in our group that they saw the reading of the Bible as sort of foundation for everything else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Reading your Bible, what are you going to pray? Pray the word. You're going to fellowship around the things of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Psalm 66, Malachi 316. And then, of course, sharing the gospel. I, I can't help but remember the verse that Pastor shared when we were out caroling about Stephen spoke with both wisdom and in the spirit, but he spoke the words of God. Mm -hmm. And all of that comes from the word of God itself. So mm -hmm. not only are we taught to love the word, to use the word in all these different areas, but we're constantly being stirred up to grow even more in all of them. Mm -hmm. It just, it's never ending. Mm -hmm. yeah. Immutable. Mm -hmm. I'm always impressed by the, um, when you read in the New Testament, um, just like Stephen and when he's speaking, um, how much they knew of the word of God. Yeah. You know, like Peter and the day of Pentecost and just how much those, those men knew, yeah, ignorant, unlearned fishermen who knew the Old Testament, who knew the Word of God, knew their history, knew what God had done in their lives, the testimonies, because they were taught from one generation to the next. They were passed along. That Word was instilled in their hearts, and they knew well, who their God was and what their God did for them. And it's neat to hear it come out uh, so easily off their tongues of what they what they knew, and even go back, you know, I mean, the, the Old Testament is, is quite, covers a quite long period of time, you know, and you have Ezra right there, you know, before the people, you know, just, again, just really giving the testimony that Stephen gave, um, you know, prior to Christ's coming, and they knew the Word of God. They knew what the Word said, because it was taught from one generation to the other. And that thing the, the thing that Stephen was saying a minute ago about the Word of God being the basis for really the other things that we talked about, prayer and fellowship and preaching the gospel, <clears throat> is so true. It came up at our meeting also. Um, when you pray, like we said, you should pray the Word when we're fellowshipping. The Word of God is the center. It's the foundation of our fellowship with each other. It's what we share in common, and yes, yeah, certainly it's what we proclaim to the lost. And um, the Bible talks Dad was talking about it some this morning, about the perilous last days that we believe we're living in. Mm -hmm. And those are characterized by um, decep deception being rampant. There are a lot of people, even among professed Christians, that will get off course. Um, and really it's because they don't stay grounded on the Word of God. And that's it's essential for us mm -hmm. to stay grounded on the Word of God. Um, maybe I'll just read one or two of them real quickly. The Ephesians 4 passage, of course, talks about um, that we not be children tossed mm -hmm. to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine and by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive. Um, that's not what the Lord's will is for us. And like Dad was saying earlier, um, God could come down in physical form if he wanted to. And every time that you're about to be deceived, he could show up and say, no, that's not the right way. Don't go that way. Don't do that. But he doesn't. What has he given us? He's given us his word. Mm -hmm. um, certainly the passages in Timothy speak to it. Um, the one that we were in this morning, 2 Timothy 3, uh, the book, on my way over there, I'll stop at 1 Timothy 4, 1. The Spirit speaks expressly, In the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Notice that there's a lot of uh, religion in the deception that the Bible says will take place. So people are still going to be holding their Bibles. Uh, we talked with, with somebody recently who had, um, again, been in, contact had exchange with somebody who professes to be a Christian and may well be but they'd come across this false doctrine and you pick it up and even if you're not able to write a scholarly response when you know the word you can say that doesn't sound right right there and of course we're all by God's grace becoming more skillful at handling the word so that we can respond uh, directly and specifically to those things but the importance of knowing the word of God it, at all times is very great and certainly in these last days, we must know the word so that we're not people that are departing from the faith or carried about by the winds of doctrine. Um, 
that uh, yeah have a form of godliness but deny the power of them. Workmen that need not be ashamed. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. Always keep in mind that it is a means by which we get to know God better. Mm -hmm. uh, that was good that that was brought out in, um, in the meeting on Friday that I attended. Uh, several spoke of, of wanting to uh, quiet themselves, really both in prayer as well as in Bible reading, that they would uh, allow the Lord to minister to their hearts. And that's not a, a spooky thing. And it's being still that you might know that he is God. Nope. The Bible, Bible speaks of God speaking with a still small voice, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we need to approach his word as his message to us and allow his Holy Spirit to speak to us. And yes, you might not find uh, the, um, oh yes, the genealogies or the accounts of how many from this family or how many of that family you know, re returned um, <clears throat> uh, from exile in Babylon to rebuild the temple or to rebuild the wall. You know, those numbers might not be particularly meaningful, convicting, enlightening, uh, but there's, there's, a, there's rich nourishment for our spirit uh, that comes from the heart of our Father. And, uh, and we read and we expect him to speak to us, don't we? Yep, we do. What else? Yep. Or who else? I'm thinking along the lines of um, prayer. Yep. And um, for me personally, just just also incorporating um, praise and worship into prayer, being really thankful. Mm -hmm. I know pastors recently taught on that also, just about coming into God's presence, you know, with praise, with thanksgiving, with a thankful heart, and mm -hmm. making that a part of my prayer to enrich it so that it would be more fruitful mm -hmm. that time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I've been more mindful personally of, um, just trying to incorporate that into my own prayer. Mm -hmm. I know it came up in our meeting where some mentioned that they had had prayer lists in times past, and they dug them up and realized a lot of the things that they had put on the list had been answered. Mm -hmm. So that encouraged them to create another list, but then also not just to stick solely to the list, but they may be sitting quietly at a time and a need comes to mind. The Bible says to pray always and everything by prayer. Mm -hmm. The prayer at that moment, I know we were here for Labor Love on Saturday and talking to someone in the hallway, they started mentioning a need and as they're starting to talk about the need, you start to pray. And you say, once, once they finish it, let's just pray. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't Amen. say just, that's not right. Let's pray. Yeah. And we prayed right there in the hallway. Yeah. And is there something wrong with praying right instantly at that time? Not at all. I think of the book, the book of Acts when they looked upon the layman and says their eyes were fastened on him. Mm -hmm. And he said, look on us. And they were headed off to do their business, but they saw this person with a need and took the time instantly, right at that time, to pray for that person. Mm -hmm. And he was healed. Mm -hmm. And what a testimony that was. So it was good to hear that, yes, lists are great, but it's also a time to pray for needs when they come up at a moment's notice. I know, mm -hmm. for me, it's, it's, it's those quiet times in the evenings when you're, you're in between shutting down the house and off to bed that things come to mind. And if something comes to mind, it's certainly not us doing it. Oh, I'm going to remember this need in the church or this need for this person or whatever it might be. It's not you. It's the Lord putting that on your heart at that moment, respond in obedience, trusting the leading of the Lord to pray and pray at that time. Mm -hmm. We also talked about praying in faith. Um, we talked about believing for it, the expectation. Um, not just throwing out the prayer or putting the prayer up, but really believing God for it. Amen. Um, because it's, you see the people that were healed, it, it was, they, their faith was, it was a faith that was in them that was recognized by, either by, by Christ or by one of the apostles, and said, yep, I see that they have the faith to be healed. When we pray, we pray in faith for mm -hmm. others, mm -hmm. and we believe that God will answer those prayers. It's when we ask, and we seek, and we knock, mm -hmm. and we do it continually, faithfully, mm -hmm. and, but we are believing for God to answer those prayers. Mm -hmm. We uh, also gave some discussion to getting quiet, as was just said a moment ago. I personally, I uh, regularly will, you know, mention things in prayer, but definitely need to do more to um, pray longer sometimes for needs as 
as need uh, would require, as the Lord would have me do, and um, to labor in prayer. Jesus, it says there in the Garden of Gethsemane, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Mm -hmm. um, we should pray, like the Bible says in James, the effectual fervent prayer of a mm -hmm. righteous man avails much. And sometimes, as we've been well taught over the years, um, to mention something in prayer is fine and good, but then there are definitely times where you need to take more time, pray longer, pray harder. Watch and pray was mentioned the other day, you know, the literal understanding of letting sleep go from your eyes. <clears throat> um, and just sometimes I need to get quiet um, and wait on the Lord, yeah, worship the Lord, whatever the uh, Lord would direct you to do. But that was a, that's something personally that I need to give some attention to is praying. Um, longer and more, you know, just getting quiet before the Lord. Think about that. You know, you mentioned Jesus in the garden and he went and prayed more earnestly. I mean, you would, we would think Jesus's prayer was always earnest and fervent. I'm sure it was. Uh, but he goes away and he prays more earnestly. Uh, and uh, if we were to examine our own prayer life and, uh, you know, evaluated. Uh, how are we doing? Mm -hmm. Is there not room to develop our prayer life? Mm -hmm. to get better at praying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is there not room for our prayer to be more effectual, more fervent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. More consistent. You know, Jesus taught yeah. the disciples to pray uh, and not to faint. Amen? Amen. Men are always to pray and do not to faint. Are we consistent in our prayer? As we, as we do so, as we give ourselves to it, um, and it was mentioned, the, the sowing uh, to the spirit principle. And how about that language? Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. If we sow to the spirit, if we sow uh, to, uh, in such a way that we're cultivating a closer communion with the Lord through prayer, quieting ourselves before him to listen to his voice, uh, praying effectual, fervent prayer, praying, uh, bearing the needs of our brothers and sisters before the Lord on a continuous basis, um, wouldn't, we, wouldn't we grow? Wouldn't we <clears throat> learn to hear his voice more? And wouldn't we see more prayer answered? And, uh, and prayer is not just asking God for things, you know, yeah. making intercession. That's a significant part of it, lifting up the needs of others and ourselves to the Lord. And there's probably room in most of our lives to grow in that, but also just waiting on the Lord, mm -hmm. listening for his voice. Amen. Or as mentioned a minute ago, worshiping the Lord. Those are all parts of prayer, just generally communion with God that um, it takes time. It mm -hmm. takes time to get quiet. Uh, many of us could perhaps um, identify with the challenge that it is to just get quiet. Plenty of us have lots of stuff going on. And again, as was said earlier, uh, you got to just say, no, that, that's not going to get done right now. I'm going to take time and get quiet with the Lord. You read the stories in the scripture where Jesus would minister all day and he'd go away at night, right, up into the mountain to pray and get quiet with the Lord. And um, it's definitely a, a word that Father has for us. Mm -hmm. I think of Elijah, when he wraps his face in his mantle. He'd just seen the earthquake, the fire, and the great wind. And the Bible tells us that the Lord wasn't in any of those. But then he stilled himself, quiet, wrapped his face in his mantle, and then he heard the Lord say, Elijah, what are you doing here? Again, that's just a blocking out of all the distractions as best we can in the natural and just setting ourselves to hear from the Lord because Elijah was in some distress. But um, as he laid aside those distractions and wrapped his face in his mantle just to not be distracted by what he saw and heard, what was around him. He heard the voice of the Lord speak to him clearly. Yep. I was reading a, a Spurgeon devotional there. It's either uh, this morning or last evening. It read along those lines. I mean, who doesn't uh, try to quiet themselves in the presence of God for some prayer and uh, not have to contend with distractions? A thousand and one thoughts going through your mind. Mm -hmm. All that you've got to do or should have done or... Uh, and, this. And, um, you know, the, uh, the simple point, uh, among, among other things, the brother was just bringing out how uh, we decide 
uh, whether or not we're going to give place to that and let it just continue. Yeah. Um, we can reign in our thoughts. We can, by the grace of God. We don't have to let our thoughts just run wild. Okay, maybe you sat in your chair intending to pray, but you didn't pray because you were just thinking about all the different things. And you finish, 10 minutes go by, 15 minutes goes by, half an hour goes by, and, um, and that was your prayer time. But you didn't do any praying because you were thinking about all kinds of different things, if you were awake. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, we can, we can, by the grace of God, focus in prayer and bring thoughts captive, can't we? Yes, yep, we can. Yep. Yeah. When needs are serious, uh, we're, we're typically more focused, aren't we? Right? Yeah. 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 Yep. More earnest, more fervent in prayer. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we need to consider is this. Is what we're praying for worth praying about? And if so, maybe we should be a little bit more earnest, yeah. more fervent, more consistent. Hallelujah. Who else? What else? On the topic of uh, fellowship, we had some good discussion. I appreciate what somebody shared, uh, how when you get talking with other people, you're reminded, among other things, that your needs aren't the only needs that there are, that there's stuff going on in other people's lives. And it, it's along the lines of what you've uh, really been emphasizing recently from uh, Hebrews chapter 10 and Philippians chapter 2, that we're not to look on our own things, but on the things of others, or we are to consider others, how we can provoke them to love and good works. Mm -hmm. um, all of us have a horrible bent toward self-love and um, thinking is was that uh, affects our perspective on fellowship. It's like, yeah, I need to go to church, get together with the people of God for what I can get out of it. I need to be edified. I need to have the word taught to me. I need people to meet my needs. And the Bible talks a lot about you gathering for the purpose of other people, yeah. not just so that you can basically get your spiritual nourishment. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than to receive. Mm -hmm. And as we come with that mentality, the Lord will certainly meet our needs, um, but he'll also use us to meet the needs of other people. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know in our group, uh, fellowship was brought up for two different reasons. One person recognized that, as Pastor Jim just spoke, they found themselves too much focused on themselves, so they wouldn't gather. And that's a case where it's just a matter of just gathering as a basic principle. But then another person brought up how they might gather with a group of people or, about, or with a couple of people, whatever, and it's not just the event, whether it's a game of some type or a movie or whatever the case is, but, but to at some point steer the conversation around to the things of the Lord because in that is true koinonia achieved, mm -hmm. true fellowship actually enjoying once we're speaking of things that are not earthly but eternal. And uh, it was good to hear the two perspectives on fellowship in general but in fellowship of a more weightier measure as mm -hmm. far as things yeah. of the Lord as mm -hmm. opposed to just box scores or whatever that has, you know, never happened going on or yeah. weather or whatever. Um, I know for me, a verse that I've read many times is, is Romans 1, 11, 12, it says, for I, and this is Paul saying this to the people he's going to see. For I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But then he also says, that is that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. Now for Paul to tell someone that they have faith that he can learn from, that's powerful. I mean, this is Paul, the writer, and he's longing to see this person that he might receive from them. That's the true heart of fellowship. Now, I'm gonna talk with Bryson because you know what? You're going to impart something to me by faith. I'm not sure what it is, but it'll be something. And look forward to it, long for that. <laughs> Dearly. Put him on the spot. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the true heart of fellowship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit doesn't, you know, the saints are gathering, the word's out, okay, let's, um, let's uh, go here, do this, uh, head over to so and so's house. <clears throat> Holy Spirit isn't on a regular basis going to encourage an individual, no, don't go. No, it, it would be better for you to stay and not gather with the saints. That won't be the Holy Spirit. It will not be. You heard that? I, I, I'm, I'm saying... <laughs> I'd like to... I'd li if, you, if you think that it is, then um, 
give me some biblical basis that would support that position because I can give you several passages of scripture and truths in the lives of Jesus and in, uh, in, in life of Jesus and the, uh, and the um, <clears throat> men and women of God that, um, that would plainly demonstrate uh, we should consider others. Amen? Yep. Amen. Yeah. So uh, whether it's the laundry or the meal prep, meal prep or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. It'll get done after or some other time. Gather. Amen? Yeah, if God has put it on your heart to open up your home and have people over, then... Steve's then, ready to come. I'm ready to come. <laughs> Do it, you know? Do it. And when you're invited, go, like Pastor's saying. Mm -hmm. You know, don't turn it down. You know, mm -hmm. it's been a long week. I'm tired. I just want to go to bed. No. Someone's going to buy you dinner. Go out there and go, go get the dinner. Whoa. You know? Wow. Um, but you can invite people over your house, and it doesn't have to be much. You know, you, they tell them to bring it. Uh, the food. So... <laughs> Um, Tried that. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> but like I said, it doesn't have to be much. You can just, uh, but just getting together is the important thing. Amen. So people did talk about outside of sort of scheduled fellowship times of gathering, getting together, spending time uh, as mm. friends do, um, people do. Um, but just look and pray about those times too. Don't, don't just come out, you know, with an empty belly or maybe with, um, you know, with a board game in hands, fine, but come praying about those opportunities to be able to give and to serve, to sow into someone else's life that you're spending time with. Yeah, the few hours that we gather on a, on a regular or maybe we could say scheduled basis per week, that eh, should just uh, uh, whet the appetite for more. You with me there? Amen. Yeah, it's just a, it's a little jump start. Just, okay, this is good, we need this, and, uh, and this is beneficial. Let's do this some more. Yep. Yeah, nobody should think, okay, I've met my obligation. Went to three services, came out to corporate prayer. Okay, I've fellowship this week. No, we should think, okay, yeah, this is, this is what God intends for our lives. Daily in the temple and from house to house. Amen? Yep. Amen. What else? Hmm? Pardon me? Please do. <laughs> I know the teaching is about growing. And, um, mm -hmm. yep. you know, if we do these things, then we will grow. Yep. And one of the, you know, just out of Romans 12, too, just we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. Mm -hmm. um, the Bible talks about being washed with the water of the word. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I'm thankful that God does a work in our lives. We're not talking about just um, suppressing your flesh, you know, mm -hmm. with happy thoughts or whatever, or just trying to control yourself. Like people in the world do, you know, whether they're, you know, the, the alcoholic who's got the 12 steps and he's believing mm -hmm. in the, the doorknob is his God. Um, nope. Um, this is this is about trusting the Lord and about changing who we are, that the new man that's within you, the Christ that's in you, um, that that man grows up mm -hmm. and um, and that becomes the dominant um, influence in your life. That's mm -hmm. who you really are. That's the new man. And um, so I'm, I'm thankful that the work that God's doing in, in my life and then everyone else's life in here mm -hmm. as we're growing up and we're growing together, hearts mm -hmm. being knitted together, and we're growing up in the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so if we do these things, we will grow. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen. We look more like our Father which is in heaven, Amen. being conformed to his image. Hallelujah. That's, uh, again, these, these practices are not an end in themselves. They are a means by which we get to know our God and Father. Amen? Amen. 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 We'll finish there for this afternoon. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we do give you thanks and praise for the free access that we have into your holy presence through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We thank you that as your children, you have given us the capacity to hear your voice. You've given to us your spirit as our teacher and a comforter, one who, who leads and guides us, who strengthens us, enables us to fulfill your will for our lives. You've, you've given us your holy word, O oh Lord God, a, 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 a revelation of yourself, who you are, who we are as we stand before you, our tendencies both, both uh, naturally or carnally, but also a revelation of of your plan and purpose uh, for, for our lives and for our future, 
a work that you've begun in us and they're committed to completing, O oh Lord God. We thank you for that. We do thank you for the body that you've given to us and the fellowship that we can enjoy with one another and really a fellowship that we enjoy with you as we are fellowshipping with one another. And Lord, we do thank you for the privilege of being able to take the truths of the gospel and share them with those who don't know to a lost and dying generation. Help us, O oh Lord, to, to be all that you've called us to be. Okay. Help us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of your will for our lives. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Lord bless y'all. Greet one another in the love of the Lord. God's grace and peace go with you.